Thanks, Karen. And uh, thank you, um, everyone, for the opportunity to be able to come and, and share with you um, this morning. Um, it, it feels like from across the water because of where I am in, in Bath. And uh, uh, but it's just good for us to be able to take this time um, with everything else that's going on just to to reflect. And I know that you know, later on today and across tomorrow as well, you've got some some great stuff and some great people who are going to be sharing with you. But just to kind of root ourselves at the beginning of, of the day in this whole concept of, of Sabbath and, and what that is. Um, just to kind of share with you a little bit about myself, as Karen said, I'm, uh, I'm Andy, um, I'm married to Bex, and uh, we have a, a five-year-old son, Leo. And I've been in Baptist ministry um, since about 2009 and uh, have been here in Bath for six years. And for me, the, the journey that I've been on in terms of, uh, in terms of Sabbath has been a, an ongoing one really across my ministry. The patterns that I have now, which sustain me throughout the course of a day a week a month and, and a year are patterns which I haven't always had and actually the lack of those patterns being there particularly in the early days of ministry um, kind of led to a, a real um, almost a falling apart of life for me but also of, of ministry and so I, I know firsthand, and so I'm not talking to you this morning about Sabbath from an academic perspective. I'm talking to you, I guess, as someone who, who has learned firsthand that, that not making space for these rhythms uh, in life can, can be very costly um, personally um, to us. Um, but before we just go into just looking a little bit about some of the background to that, I just wanted to take a moment just for us to pause and pray uh, together. So let's just be still for a moment and, and let's pray. All things come from you, O oh God, and to you we return. All things emerge in your great river of life, and into you we vanish again. At the beginning of this day, we wake not as separate streams, but as countless currents in a single flow. The flow of this day's dawning, the flow of this day's delight, the flow of this day's sorrows, your flow, O oh God, in the twistings and turnings of this new day. So speak to us, we pray, through your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Some of you may know this or have heard this before, but I heard this a couple of years ago and it's always stuck with me, that we are made up of around seven billion, billion, billion atoms. And the atoms that make us up are around about one billion years old. And those atoms that make you up before they made you up, made up other stuff. That's a deeply scientific word, uh, stuff. And, and after you are gone, they will go on to make up other stuff as well. From the very beginning, the universe has been growing, it's been expanding, it's been deepening itself into greater life and variety and purpose and fullness, moving forwards. That's the, the direction, the flow, as it were, of the entire cosmos. And it, it's always made me uh, wonder why it is that I am so frustrated at times by people who have very entrenched or kind of regressive um, viewpoints. And, and actually, for me, it's that sometimes those people are operating in the opposite flow 
to the entire cosmos because if the the movement of the cosmos is moving forward and and a greater movement into life and fullness and uh, and so on and vibrancy sometimes when we become entrenched when we become stuck or we 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 always look back to the way things were then we take ourselves out of that flow the flow of everything else that's moving around us that renewal is at the heart of the world that God has made. Did you know that the, the cells in your body change and renew every seven years to completely new cells? So you could say that if, for example, um, my wife Bex is half Kiwi, so her whole maternal side of the family, other than her mum, live over in New Zealand, and uh, we went to visit them about 11 years ago, but we haven't seen some of them since then. So if we went to see them again, uh, when all of this craziness has, has gone, physically speaking, we would be looking at a totally different cellular person. All the cells that make them up will have completely renewed, would be completely different than when we saw them 11 years ago. And yet there is something very familiar, obviously very recognisable about those things, th those people. And renewal, even when we don't realise it, is happening within us all the time. It is at the heart of the world that God has made. And the reason why I wanted to share that with you, because you might, you might be sat there thinking, well, what's any of that got to do with Sabbath? is that we are more connected to the world in which we live than we realise. In fact, I think most people would agree that in the kind of post-industrial world that we, we live in, we are much less connected to the world than perhaps people were for the centuries that came before. And in some ways, it's in rediscovering our connectedness to the world in which we live that we can understand how the kind of rhythms of Sabbath that God has given us as a gift um, exist. You see, uh, when we look at the world, we can see that God has made the world with pattern, with purpose, with seasons, with rhythm. They're part of, of the world that God has made and part of the flow of creation. You can see that pattern if you look at the Genesis um, creation poem in Genesis chapter one. There's this repetition and there was evening and there was morning, day one, day two, day three, all the way through to day six. You know, we experience here different seasons in the United Kingdom, don't we? We have um, winter, which we're in at the moment, and some of us had snow Yesterday and uh, a week ago, we had a, a fair bit of snow and we were able to go sledging. We've got spring and, and that's beginning to break through a little bit now with snowdrops and other flowers kind of breaking through as well. We have summer, which we're all kind of desperately longing for uh, and all of the kind of things that are associated with that, particularly in this season of, of lockdown and so on. And then we have autumn where we have the vibrancy of colours and, and so on that are around but those seasons also if we reflect upon them can be something that we can sort of place onto our own lives as well that we have seasons in our lives that reflect something of the seasons in the world around us as well that there are seasons of of winter seasons where things feel cold and dark and and it feels as though there is an absence of life. We have seasons where you begin to see that the new life breaking through in through the hard ground and, and that feels a little bit like spring. We can have seasons where it's warm and vibrant and the, the days are long and it feels as if life is good and we can enjoy that time uh, with other people. And then if there, there are seasons of autumn where we're coming out maybe of that season uh, of enjoyment and uh, things are still good. Life is still beautiful around, but things are changing a little bit, winding down 
a little bit. And all of us, at some point in our lives, will experience those different seasons. You may have experienced them a multitude of times during this season of coronavirus and um, flitted between different seasons in, in how you're feeling. I know for me, this latest sort of lockdown that we're in has been much harder um, emotionally, um, spiritually for me, and has been much more up and down, you know, so that there are some days where I, I feel fine, and then I feel flat, and then I feel great. And, and you know, it, it just is much more uh, up and down than, than it has been. And those seasons seem to exist within the space of one day, uh, not just over the course of uh, a, a month or a year or, or uh, a lifetime. So I just wanted us just for a moment to, to get into some breakout rooms and to um, just spend a few moments just talking with the people who you're in a room with, if, if you'd like to, um, about what season of life you find yourself in at the moment. If you were to take hold of that metaphor and, and, and think, what does that look like for me? Where would I say that as I come this morning to this conference uh, I'm, I'm at? Um, so feel free to share or, or not to share as you'd like. This is all generated completely randomly. Uh, and there's going to be about six or so of you in a room. So if you're unfamiliar with this, you should have a message come up on the screen uh, in a moment inviting you to join a room. So if you click, I think it's join or yes or accept or whatever, um, then we'll go into that, that time. Um, it, it's worth just reflecting on those things, not, not just today, and hopefully you've entered into that a little bit in your discussions in those breakout rooms, but generally over the course of um, this season to sort of um, reflect on where you're at, because that will change. I, I want to read to you a passage from Ecclesiastes, uh, where the teacher gives us this, this wisdom. For everything there is a season, and a time for everything under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. That's a poignant line at the moment isn't it a time to seek and a time to loose a time to keep and a time to throw away a time to tear and a time to sow a time to keep silence a time to speak a time to love a time to hate a time of war and a time for peace i think there's quite a few of life's activities which are brought under the umbrella of that wisdom uh, from the teacher. But it's important to, to take the heart of what was said there, as we've already reflected on together, is that there are different seasons uh, for us in our lives, and they mirror that pattern of creation that we are a part of. You know, we tend to want to, to multitask, to do things all at once and some of us are better at that than others but I remember challenging and this is a challenge I want to give to you guys as well challenging people in my previous church to do this and whenever I do any kind of teaching on um, on Sabbath or rest uh, when I'm speaking with the the book that I wrote on it then I always give this challenge uh, which is what do you do when you boil the kettle now, if you're anything like me, you will crack on and do something else. You know, you'll go on and tidy that little bit of the kitchen over there, or I'll go and do something else and I'll come back and, you know, when the, the kettle's boiled. But what I want you to do when you boil the kettle is just to stand there and do nothing. 
maybe look out the window if you've got a window in in uh, the place where your kettle is or just stand still for a moment and just take a few deep breaths just to kind of be connected to to yourself to god to the world around you just take a moment to pause and the reason why i want to challenge you to do that is one it's it's actually harder than you think it might be and actually a, a lot of people have fed back um and said actually i found that really difficult really annoying to stand there for that time two because it's a finite amount of time because unless you have like a proper defunct kettle it's only going to take like a couple of minutes if that to, to stand there and do that uh, and thirdly because you get a cup of tea or a cup of coffee at the end to to reward you for that uh, that task that you've undertaken but I'd, I'd love to challenge you to that maybe not every time you do it but certainly once or twice later on today to take time um, to to do that and then just to take note of of any particular um, feelings that you have or things that that exercise provoked in you whether it was difficult and if so what you found difficult about it um, whether you're going to do it or not and, it, and if you get to the end of the day and you think no that's a stupid thing to do I'm not going to do that just reflect on why you think that's a stupid thing and why you didn't want to do it just use it as an exercise just to kind of enter into this whole kind of pattern of pausing because we live in a world where everything is fast paced we live in a world where you know everything comes at us relentlessly all at once and you know we live in a world that almost rejects this natural pattern of of seasons of pattern of rhythm of rest um because what it values is the thing uh, the productive thing and rest becomes a means to an end to achieve the productive thing or it becomes a recovery from your work only so that you can go back into that same pattern i think for me that's certainly what rest had become when it was um i had unhealthy patterns of of work and rest that rest for me was just recovering from the week that i'd had or the day that I'd had, only to jump straight back into the same pattern of life in the week, you know, that I'd experienced before. And I, I might go, oh man, that was such a hard week, or that was so tough, I'm so glad for a rest, but nothing changed. So I went straight back into the same pattern. And, and I thought to myself, is this really, is this really what Sabbath is about? Is this really what rest is about the rest that you know jesus says i have come to give you rest come to me you know and i will give you rest is that really what he was talking about just a day to recover from the rest of life or from work you know the the world in which we live values what you do far more than who you are it values, you know, what you have to offer in terms of your productivity much more than, than who you are kind of intrinsically as a, as a person. You may be in situations in terms of work or ministry where that's the case as well or, or, or that you feel that that's the case, where you feel that burden of expectation to keep on producing. And I don't know about you, but in this time, where we've had to do stuff on Zoom and YouTube and WhatsApp and, you know, the, the burden to keep producing stuff um, has been quite, quite relentless, quite real. Even if that's just my perceived expectation, even if the rest of my congregation and my leadership team don't have that expectation, for some reason I have that expectation. And maybe some of you do as well. But in that sense, we, uh, who we are as children of God, who we are as people who are created in love by our Heavenly Father is essential to our understanding of Sabbath. Because it is because God loves you, because God delights in you, that he has given us this gift of rest. That rest is not 
a, a means through which you just have to recover from life or recover from work, but it is a gift from a God who loves you and whose desire for you is that you would experience a greater degree of life, the fullness of life, that in the, the rhythms and the seasons and the patterns of your life with work and rest and everything that that uh, entails, his desire for you is that you would experience those things as a gift from him rather than a burden that you have to, to carry. And so uh, my encouragement to us as we, we enter into this two-day conference is to, and I, I rewrote down the title, um, Encouraging Faith and Mission Out of Sabbath. You know, it'd be very easy to look at the title, and I think it's a great title, um, and to almost think of Sabbath then as just the the platform on which we go to build um, faith and mission. Whereas actually Sabbath for me is far more than that. Sabbath is not a, a means to an end. Sabbath is a gift that is given by God so that we might experience life. And without that life, then mission and faith becomes less likely, less possible. Uh, I remember quoting uh, in the, the book I wrote about rest from a guy who said, God has given me the gospel and a horse, but I've worked the horse to death and now I can't deliver the gospel. And actually, for many of you, uh, for, for me at times, this has been true, that I've worked myself into a position where I've, I've flogged the horse of my own spirituality to death. And I've had nothing left to give to anyone else. And I, I've ceased to embody that life-giving nature of the gospel. You know, if, if someone was to look at your diary or your life, uh, maybe outside of the, the abnormality of this time, but generally speaking, would they see uh, an advert for a healthy modeling of rest and work? Would they see a good balance between those two things? Would they look at your diary and say, oh, there's, there's life there. I can see that there's life there. Do you look at your diary and say, yeah, there's, there's life there? Or is it just the moving relentlessly from one thing to another to another and then just something in the middle to recover or something at the end to recover? I'm going to pray because I want to give you some time before the next session um, just to, to maybe go and make a cup of coffee and uh, stand next to your kettle, um, but also just to have some, some break before I think the next session starts at, uh, at half past 10. But I want to read to you a, a prayer um, before I do that. Um, that for us, as we not just move into this day, but this season of life and for everything that's going on for you at the moment, that this might be a prayer for, for us. Let's pray. Lord of creation, create in us a new rhythm of life, composed of hours that sustain rather than stress, of days that deliver rather than destroy, of time that tickles rather than tackles. Lord of liberation, by the rhythm of your truth, set us free from the bondage and baggage that break us, from the Pharaoh's and fellows who fail us, from the plans and pursuits that prey upon us. Lord of resurrection, may we be raised into the rhythm of your new life, dead to deceitful calendars, 
dead to fleeting friend requests, dead to the empty peace of our accomplishments, to our packed full planners, we bid peace. To our over-caffeinated consciences, we say cease. To our suffocated selves, Lord, grant release. Drowning in a sea of deadlines and death chimes, we rest in you, our lifeline. By your ever restful grace, allow us to enter your Sabbath rest as your Sabbath rest enters into us. In the name of our creator, our liberator, our resurrection and our life, we pray. Amen. <laughs>